Hi guys, David Healy here with you. I've seen um, a few questions today, uh, both related to uh, offsetting the start position of samples in contact. So I thought I'd do a little video showing you how to do that. Now, one of the questions was asking, how do you offset the start position for all your samples or a selection of your samples uh, in a fast way? And the other question was asking, how can you have that start offset adjustable via a slider or a knob on the GUI. So we'll look at uh, how we can do those things uh, in the, in this video. So I've made uh, a simple instrument here. I've got three groups set up and they're all identical. I've just taken the first group and duplicated it. And each one has a selection of samples in. So what we'll look at first is offsetting the start position or moving the start position for an, a selection of samples. So let's say we've got our three groups, but we only want to affect the start position in the first two groups. So we'll select those groups and then just select the zones that you want to uh, apply the offset to. So we're going to do all of them. So I'm just going to hit Control A. We're going to open the Wave Editor and it's showing us one of the samples we've got selected. It's showing us this one here, which has the a uh, yellow outline on it. If I zoom in there, you can see that bit better. So that's the sample that's being displayed below. For this uh, task, it doesn't matter which one it's showing. Right, so this green thing here, this is the start position. This represents where the sample will start playing back from. And as I move it, you'll notice this up here moves. This is the start position in samples. And along the top here, we have a timeline which shows us the start position in milliseconds. Or if we zoom out, it'll be seconds. So let's say we want to move the start position of all the selected samples to uh, half a second. So we'll just move this green marker along till we're roughly on the half second mark. Now, if we wanted to do this for each one, we could click on each sample and drag the little green handle across, but that takes a while. So we're going to do it the quick way and apply it to all of them in one go. So we go to this drop down menu here, select to all selected zones, and go down to copy current sample start settings. So just click that. It'll take a second to load as it applies the value to all the samples. But now if we click through each one, we'll see that the start position has been offset to the half second mark. Uh, one thing I should mention is I selected these first two groups and then I selected all the zones in here. For this to work, you have to make sure you have selected groups only checked. If you disable that, then you're going to see all the samples, no matter which groups you've got selected. So you've got to have that on as well. Okay, I'm going to delete these groups. And I'm just going to reset the start position of all these zones. So now we're back to where we started. We've got one group, one set of samples, and their start positions are right at the beginning. So now what we're going to look at is how you can make that offset dynamic so that it can be varied using a knob on the user interface. So we're going to need a bit of scripting for that. Uh, but before we do the script, we're going to kind of discuss the stuff we've got to do in contact to get this to work. So in order to be able to offset the start position of your samples, you need to have your samples, let me just close these down. You need to have your samples loaded either in sampler mode, which loads the whole sample into memory. And you can see the memory's jumped up now to uh, almost 33 megabytes. So you can do it that way and load all the samples into memory. But usually you want to stay in DFD mode because you don't want to use up all that extra RAM. So I'll put it back to DFD, we're down to two megs. So what you can do is if you open the wave editor and the mapping editor, we have this thing called SMOD, which is a start position modulator. And I'm putting the cursor over this little uh, value box here. And you can see down at the bottom in the info bar, it's telling us what this, um, the start modulator does. So what we can do here is we can set a portion of the sample to be loaded into RAM. So RAM in, uh, usage will increase a little bit, but it won't load the whole sample into RAM. So we only load in the extra that we want. So let's start off, uh, let's say we want our knob on the user interface to be able to move the start position of the sample up to half a second. So we're going to increase the S mod to the point at half a second. So we're going to have half a second of sample loaded in. So to do that, I'm just going to zoom in a bit. 
We can see this the half second mark around there. And as I move the S mod, you're going to see coming from this green line of the start uh, marker here, up at the top, you're going to see a green line extending outwards down the timeline. Can you see that? As I move the S mod up and down, that's going to represent how much more of the sample we're loading in. So I'm going to move that to roughly the halfway point. It doesn't matter if you go over it slightly, in fact, that can sometimes be better. So we're just around the 500, the half a, um, the half a second mark, 500 milliseconds. And now using the same menu that we used before, I'm going to apply that start mod value, copy current start mod settings, to all the selected samples. So once that's done, you can see RAM usage has increased to uh, just under 5 megs, but we haven't jumped up all the way to 30 megs like we would have done if we'd have used the sampler mode. And if I go through each of the samples now, you can see this green marker for the S mod has uh, been applied to all of them. So that's the first thing. So now we can give our users the option to uh, start the sample up to half a second into it. And you can increase this S mod value all the way right up to the uh, full range of the sample if you wanted. You might as well load it in sampler mode if you're going to do that, but you can have as much S mod value as you like. And you don't have to apply it to all the samples if you only want it to be applied to some. Right, so that's the first thing. Now we've got to make it so we can offset the sample. And we can do this entirely in the script. Uh, but I like to use a modulator in these instances to do it because it's a bit easier and then we can link that to a knob on our script and it's it's a bit simpler. But I'll, I'm going to show you both ways of doing it anyway. We'll start off with this way. So in the source section, click the mod button and in here is where you'd put a pitch modulator if you're going to modulate pitch and things like that. We're going to modulate the sample start position and we're going to do that using a continuous controller. You can also do it using a constant modulator uh, but I usually link it to a continuous controller because it's nice to be able to control it with like the mod wheel or something like that. So we'll just let MIDI CC. Uh, we'll leave it set to mod wheel. We'll change this where it says pitch. We're going to change that to sample start. And we're going to leave that at 100% for now. Okay, and then if I open the wave editor again, open the mapping editor again, we can see this sample. Let's go with C3. And um, just so we can see it all on the screen here, I'm going to close the mapping editor, but down here what's being displayed is C3. And if I zoom in here, you can see that when the sample starts playing back, it's going from the zero point. We want to be able to move it along this range. So what we can do is if we open this modulation table here, I'm just going to hit active. and um, I what I've done is I've just turned this this um, table view on just so we can see the position of the mod wheel. So down here you can see the mod wheel being moved and in here you're going to be able to see the current position of the mod wheel. So there you can see the mod wheels at zero. It appeared just down here, the little grey bar appears. And then as I move the mod wheel up, so it's about halfway now, we're going to see the grey bar appear in the middle of this table. And then I'm going to move it to the top. Now while that's happening, if I zoom in on this window, you'll notice that as I move the mod wheel to different positions, the start offset is moved up to a maximum of half a second. So you can see how easy that is. We've got a modulator linked up um, to our start, uh, our sample start position. So now what we can do is we can just simply link a, a knob up on the GUI and tell it to output to CC1. So uh, let's do that. That should be quite easy to do. I'm going to write this in Sublime Text just because it's quicker and I'm familiar with it, but we'll just copy and paste it in here. Uh, let's add a, a knob to the interface. Let's call this offset. 
and we can go from 0 to 5,000. That's going to be the milliseconds. Oh, no, sorry. We can go from 0 to 127 because we're controlling a CC. We'll do the 0 to 5,000 one later. And then we just need to add a callback for this. And we're going to use a set controller command to output to the mod wheel the value of the knob. I'm going to hit F5, that's going to compile. Paste it into contact. So now it's going from 0 to 127. And this could be a slider, it doesn't have to be a knob. You'll probably want to use it with a slider. And um, if I bring up the wave editor now, So you can see as I move this knob, it's actually moving the mod wheel on the interface down here. And if I hit that C3 note, and I move the offset, So you see, really quick, really easy. If you wanted to use, um, if you didn't want it to be linked to a mod wheel, you could link this to a controller that the user can't access, like 110, and then just tell the user not to use controller 110 for anything. And then in here, you'd put 110. So that's a really quick way of doing it. Now you don't have to use a continuous controller modulator like we've done. You could set this to, uh, or you could even control it by velocity if you wanted, or um, uh, have it random or controlled by the pitch bend. You can use any of these modulators to control the sample start. But the important thing is that you've got that uh, SMOD value set. A common one to use is a constant controller and then you just have to link up to this slider with your script. That's another way of doing it. So if I place that C3 key again, you can see that because this slider is at the max, it's starting at 0.5. You can move it to the minimum and we get it from the beginning. But I like doing it with a CC just because I tend to have things, um, everything I, I script, all the user controls in my scripts, I like them to be controllable by a continuous controller anyway. So if, if I don't control it by a CC, someone's just going to come and right click and do MIDI learn and assign it to the mod wheel anyway. That tends to be what happens. Right, so we looked at that. I'm going to delete this, cons uh, this modulator now. And I'm going to show you the other way of uh, using this knob to control the offset. So uh, let's see, I will delete this. We don't need that anymore. I'm going to change this from 0 uh, to 127 to 0 to 5000. So that's milliseconds. So that gives us up to our half second value. So whereas the 0 to 127 was just the full range of the modulator, and that was the full range of the S mod, Doing it this way, we have to specify our upper range. So we're setting it to 5,000 because we've set the S mod value to um, half a second, which is 5,000 milliseconds. If you're going to set this the, the S mod to something else, you've got to make sure you set your knob's maximum value to that something else as well. You can also set a minimum as well if you don't want it to always start at the beginning. Uh, but you'd be better off just adjusting the start position of the sample for that. Okay, so this way we're going to do it in on note. So write the on note callback. We're going to ignore the incoming note. And instead we're going to play a note. And we're going to give it the same note number that was played and the same velocity that was played. The only thing we're going to change is this parameter. Usually we'd put a zero in there and uh, put a minus one there. Um, the zero, this is the offset parameter, so all we have to do is put our knobs value in because this parameter should be in milliseconds. So uh, that's another way of doing it. And if I put this in, what have I done there? Oh yeah, it's not called value, is it? It's called offset. So if I hit F5 on that, that's compiled, I'll paste it in here. So our knob now goes from zero to 5000. Okay, so now if I press that note again and move this, I'll zoom in, we should hear the, uh, we should see the start position being offset. 
And that isn't working. I've gone wrong somewhere. One moment. All right, yeah, sorry, my mistake. You've probably already seen this. Uh, that should actually be 500 rather than 5,000 because 500 milliseconds. And now that I think about it, it's actually microseconds, not milliseconds. So what we need to do is times this value by a thousand. So we can actually put in three more zeros like that. Um, but what that will mean is here we'll actually see uh, uh, 500,000 uh, displayed there, which isn't as good as seeing 500. So we'll put it in here. And what we're going to do is just take that knob value and times it by a thousand. So we're taking our millisecond value, which is 0 to 500, and we're turning it into a microsecond value that this function can understand. Okay, let's give that another go. It should work now. So if I zoom in here, and we're at 0, and I'm just going to move this knob. There we go, so we get the full range. All right, guys, I hope you found that useful. I hope you can incorporate this into your instruments. Don't forget that doesn't have to be a knob. That can be a slider or even velocity if you're doing it through um, a modulator, as we looked at. There's a number of ways you can get that to work, uh, but these are just a couple of examples, and the they're the easiest ways, I think. They're the ways that I tend to use most of the time. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.